please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Like three movie thoughts. I will start with the ending. I'm very backwards like that. I did not care for the idea of Kay having known about Jay, James, since he was a kid. I like it the way it was in the first one. This this retcons the meeting between them in the first one. It, when you watch the first one, when Kay finds Jay, he isn't... I'm not going to spoil the first one, by the way. But, yeah, when, when he meets him, it's just, you know, wow. This kid is agent material. So... Yeah, I, I think I'm going to try to get him, or I'm going to try to get him trained and get him to be a proper agent. And that's it. And, you know, I don't see why they need to change around that. Excuse me. So with this, excuse me, you have that he basically, I don't know, rediscovers him? Has he been watching over him all those years? Is it that he just recognizes him and never goes, huh, I used to know that kid, you know? He never said, he never turns to Zed and goes like, dude, I met him, you know, years ago. I, I know this kid. He's, yeah. And... Yeah, I just, I, I don't think that's a good... Addition, I don't think, I, I, I didn't feel like this needed to be tied that, you know, distinctly to the, yeah, anyway, personally thought it was kind of obvious when you meet this, you know, black officer and he literally says, you know, my firstborn son is here watching this rocket launch, you're like, okay, yeah, Jay's father, obviously, you know. And, you know, they set up that, you know, the, the Jay's father thing earlier in the film. And then, you know, you have this, this black guy not having a father had nothing to do with, you know, yeah, the, the father leaving of his own accord, you know. So, so think before you judge because the next, you know... It could be this, it could be that, you know, like, Michael from Lost, the wife just kept him away, you know, you never know. I don't know, I, I just personally hate crap like that, but <laughs> that's just me. Uh, man, I hope I just didn't uh, offend a ton of African Americans. Anyway, I hope you get what I'm saying. I did not mind at all. In fact, I quite liked that it tied together with the Apollo launch. You know, I, I kind of like how, you know, the the astronauts, like, like see K up there, they're, you know, one of them's like, if we report this to home base, they're going to, you know, cancel the launch. And then another guy's like, I didn't see anything. You know, just, yeah, it, it just kind of, I mean, that was going to come up. Obviously, you know, they... They might get spotted up there, but if it was the astronauts, yeah, they were running into the moon. You can't blame them for that. You know, that was, that was a good moment. And it's a nice kind of... It, it fits in... I thought it was a little bit hokey that it forms the MIB logo, the, the Atom thing, you know. But, yeah, it... it I mean... There have been so many conspiracy theories about the moon landing thing. I'm just glad they actually did land on the moon in this one. Actually, I, I, well, I, th I think they did. You know, it's not entirely clear. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. 
joke. I just... Yeah, I, th I thought it was fun that they, you know, did something like that. And if you're gonna make a time travel movie, you want to have a big epic, you know, conclusion, a big epic climax, and to tie it in to something historical or to t tie it in with something, you know, I, I mean, this pretty much follows the formula set up by, you know, yeah, basically, you know, Back to the Future was the first to really set it up, and then there have been other movies that follow the formula. This basically does exactly what you expect it to, but, yeah, it's it's fun, and it does follow it properly. I mean, it doesn't try to, like, you know, mess around with it and just kind of... It's, it's an enjoyable movie. It's, it's pretty straightforward, though there were some things that I did not see coming. By the way, I quite like that, you know, I... I didn't like seeing the worms again, but at least they were there for very few seconds. I do like that Frank the Pug has been reduced to just a photo on the back of Jay's wall. Personally, I'd like to think that it is there because Jay eventually snapped and killed Frank the Pug in a brutal, gory sequence that could not have been shown in a PG-13 movie. And it was decided by the MIB elders, who apparently never fire anyone, because it seemed like it should have been fired for neuralizing people left and right in the second movie. It was decided by them that a proper punishment would be to force him to have a massive picture of Frank the Pug placed on his back wall to always remind him of what he had done. And every so often, Jay would look at it and smile because he was happy with his actions. But that's just me, and I'm pretty messed up like that. Now, the... I mentioned in the, in the review that the first two action scenes were pretty unnecessary. Okay, the the prison escape, let's let's look at it for a second. Okay, so we have the retards that work at MIB back from the second movie. I mean, in the first movie, does it seem like anyone doesn't know their frickin' job and isn't, you know, expert at it working at the MIB? It does not. Here we have, you know, he just scans the cake. You know what I would have done? I would have gone like, okay, so you say that this is just a cake. Well, sure. <clears throat> now I got it. Put it in this little, you know, machine thing box. Have lasers cut it into tiny little pieces, just in case there's something alive in there. No, no there isn't. Maybe like, I don't know, radiated or something, just in case. I think the scan said like, oh, it's so-and-so percent organic. Even if there hadn't been, like, that little bug thing alive in there, it could have been a virus, you know, it could have been, you know, some kind of airborne... It just... I don't know, where is the, the freaking TSA in all this? That's what I want to know. I don't know, I guess they just don't operate on the moon. And why do they have that big gun that can blow through walls when they're at the moon, and it's obviously much more dangerous, for the human soldiers working there. You know, why don't they have a proper security system? Why doesn't the base go into total lockdown? Why doesn't it prevent people from blowing holes? This is the second movie all over again! You know, this is just like, freaking yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna talk about that, because I don't want to spoil the second movie in this video, but yeah. You'll probably know what I'm talking about if you've seen the second movie. And if you have, then may God have mercy on your soul. Anyway, yes, the guards are stupid, it's kind of, it, I also just didn't think it was really necessary to open the movie by, you know, a pair of breasts wearing stiletto heels, it just, didn't we get enough of stuff like that in the second movie? I'm not saying they weren't glorious breasts, I'm just saying, do we really need it in a movie that is supposed to stimulate us in other ways, or at least in, in more uh, compelling ways, you know. Anyway, 
Yeah, it was just kind of, it, it was a fun enough action scene, but it was kind of, yeah. And and the, the bit about, you know, oh, we have so many guards, and then he just blows a hole, you know, it just illuminates the, the idiocy of the whole thing. I, yeah. I'm also just not entirely sure why placing him there was necessarily a thought like, you know, when, when you see him blow a hole in the wall and they get sucked out, I mean, at first I actually thought he, the, the gun suddenly created a black hole or something, but yeah, you know, it was vacuum of space, I get it. And then it's just like, well, okay, so it's on the moon. You know that, that in the old days, before prisons were moved to space, a base that would be difficult to escape from would be like out in the middle of the ocean, you know, because it's too far to swim, you'd need a boat, you know. Yeah, unless you're an action hero, I know. But, but, yeah, you know, they, they don't build mega prisons for to contain action heroes, you know, they, they build them to contain supervillains. I could probably also get away, but anyway, why didn't they build it on a planet that he, where he couldn't have gone outside? Like the only way for him to get out of that would be for a spacecraft to come. I'm not saying they couldn't have a good escape scene. I'm saying they didn't need to make it this stupid. You know, why not have him have like a gang of people who help him escape? Let's say that they have to get a ship there because. Only when you move a ship from, I don't know, the moon, Earth, whatever, to this other planet. Let's say it's Mars. You know, some somewhere that's extremely hot or extremely cold. Some Somewhere that he literally couldn't go outside, uh, except for in this really nicely protected spaceship. And the spaceship can only be sent from this one other base. So, someone, you know, tricks, you know, from that other side they get the spaceships out. Stuff like that. You know, maybe there's a security system they have to circumvent, you know. Make it interesting, instead of just this really obvious prison escape. But the moment you see the cake, you're like, there's a file in there or something like it, you know. I also just did, did kind of find that bug a little boring. It just, Boris the animal has kind of one power, I guess, just to, and and it's just the. I mean, when you see that big metal thing on his arm, you're like, oh man, this is some handle business right up in here. You know what? What the? There's got to be some tough something insane with that arm. And really, it's just that he gets the the bug in there. I mean, why why don't they just find and kill the bug? You know, and instead of locking up his arm, he doesn't do anything with his arm that excuse me, that the, you know, bug isn't used for. It's not like he seems to have, like, super strength, at least I don't, excuse me, I don't, I don't think there was something like that, but, yeah, and it just, he, he was very bland. I talk about that in the video, in the review. Now, the light. Now, yes. A little bit more on Boris, then I'll move on to the second action scene. Yeah. His... Well, he does apparently have this other power. I did like the reveal near the end. I thought that they should have done that... Oh, maybe not done that earlier, but he should have, like, showed that he could do more. Even there at the end, he doesn't... What, what can he really do? You know, it's a cool design, it's a cool idea, but he doesn't do anything with it. Why is he so dangerous? He can shoot tiny things. It's like he has a gun in his arm or something. Okay, so he's Mega Man. What's... So what? Is that really that interesting? That, that How does that make him all that dangerous? You know, I mean... May I remind you, and this is not a spoiler for the second one, Sir Lena had shape-shifting powers. That makes you dangerous. Not that that movie used it for anything other than showing off Lara Flynn Boyle in a bikini, lingerie, but yeah. That was at least something where you could really see, but yeah, he's, he's an assassin because he's from a warrior race. Doesn't that make the entire race assassins? Anyway, yeah, he's... In that first scene, he seems like he's an intellectual, and, and he's like genuinely annoyed by the stupid people around him. And I don't know, you know, 
I'm not saying anything against that, because clearly those guards are really stupid. But there's that thing about, you know, this is not a conjugal visit, so stop conjugating. And, you know, like, oh, the joke is, conjugating isn't, you know, this has nothing to do with sex. Conjugating is what you do with a verb, you know. But, yeah, and, and then, you know, his comeback, or his response is, when was the last time you did any conjugating? And I'm thinking like, aha, he's saying, you're stupid, you don't know how to conjugate a verb. You know, that would kind of make you uh, a little bit ignorant. And then there's nothing else like that in the film, or at least I didn't, I didn't really spot anything else where he's like, ooh, I am so above you, I am smarter than you when you are these puny humans with tiny little brains. You know, it's just... Yeah, and, and he just, he has nothing on the Egger bug of the first one, who was very clearly, you know, he, he just, he really felt like humans were way beneath him. And he had a strong sense of family. You know, that's very consistent in the first film, and yeah, I love the Egger bug. But in this one, you just kind of have, yeah. And, and this one also feels like a bit of a retread of the Egger bug, because, again, you have this kind of, you know, it's, it's Jay calling him, you know, the animal instead of, you know, Boris the animal instead of just Boris, and, yeah, I don't know, I just felt like that was from, yeah, but, let's see, you have, well, I guess, the, the, like, the one thing that is consistent with Boris is that he wants revenge over Kay, you know, and then, and you, you have that scene where young Boris, me, yeah, where old Boris finds young Boris, and he's like, oh, you're gonna make all those mistakes that I, that's exactly the scene of any, yeah, this is not a spoiler for Back to the Future 2, when, you know, when an older character meets the younger version of their character, they're like, you know, ah, you're so stupid, just do as I say, you know. We've seen it before. It's just not that interesting, and and it's not like they add anything. You just you have the scene end with them standing there, you know, hissing at each other. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's just you don't really do anything for me. Now the second action scene, the entire woo thing is of course just there for. I don't even understand why they ch stay at the Chinese restaurant, actually. It's, I don't know. Maybe I missed something. I'm not saying that this is necessarily something wrong with the movie. I just, I have no idea why they stayed at the restaurant, except the plot needed them to. So, feel free to explain it, if you got it. The, the entire Wu sequence was just so that Kay could find out that Boris was back. I have no problem with that from a storytelling, story structure point of view. That makes sense. But couldn't you have done it in a better way? Because there's no reason for Boris to attack Kay in this time. He already said, I'm going back in time to kill the man. I think he said that before that scene, at least. Or at least, I, and I just don't see why he would even attack Kay now. That's not going to bring back his arm. Yeah, and he knew about the time travel because he got that from prison. You know. Wonder, he seemed to be in solitary... So I guess maybe that's all he got in prison? Oh, sorry. I should not let my mind go down that road. I wonder if he has teeth back there, too. I should not let my mind go down that road. Anyway. Yes, he found out about the time travel in prison, so why doesn't he go straight for the time travel? You know, what is the point of... I mean, I get that, you know, oh, this fish, Boris, like that. You know, he, he had a weakness for it, so obviously, you know, but... Yeah, yeah, why did he need to... And, and suddenly he has all these cronies there with him and they're trying to kill J&K. It's just so that there can be an action scene. I'm not saying... Again, it was a fun action scene. I'm not complaining about that. I'm just saying it was kind of useless. It didn't really do anything, you know. It's just... It's yet another of these scenes. It's kind of typical in recent action movies to have this... The bad guy is chased by the good guys and then gets away. And that's just all that happens in that scene. You know, it's just kind of boring when nothing really particularly changes. You know, like, he's trying to get the arc net thing from Griff. You know, love Griff. And, yeah, by the end of the scene, he just doesn't have it, and they got Griff back, and that's it. You could cut down, you could cut out that entire chase, and 
nothing would really change. You know, at the beginning of the scene, the agents have Griff and the Arknet. At the end of the scene, they got Griff back, and he still has the Arknet. So what was the point of it? You know, it's just a useless action scene. Again, fun, but useless. And that, it, that kind of is a lot of the action in this movie. You just have, you know, the good guys chase the bad guys, the bad guy, nothing really happens, you know. Now, I... I could talk about Griff some. I, I quite like... Just, I don't know, just the, the personality, this, this kind of... I think the personality is what really works with this character, because we've seen this character before. But, like, I don't know, typically he's, he's maybe going to be completely wise. I mean, he was very quirky, and quirk was one of the things that really worked in the first film. So I'm glad they brought some of that back. You know, the, the second film wasn't quirky, it was just dumb. With this, with Griff, you have some quirk back. And, yeah, you know, he he's this kind of confused, all-over-the-place guy, because he's constantly living in different times, and he doesn't know which time is going to be the one that actually happens. So, yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, I feel good, except, actually, this might happen, and then I wouldn't feel so good, and this other thing might happen, that might make me feel good, but then this other thing might happen, that would be bad. So, yeah, overall, I actually I am kind of bad. You know, just this... Yeah, I, I quite liked him, and I thought it was a nice ending with, you know, that that he got his, you know, final little moment there, and that he got to repeat the, the line, you know, ooh, that was a close one, you know, that was quite cute. And I think that's exactly how you should do, I mean, the ending of the first one is brilliant. Hands down, brilliant. You can't do it better than that. The second one tries and botches it completely. It is a train wreck at the end of a train wreck. This one just goes for something completely different. Um, yeah, no, don't worry. I'm not giving any details away about what, how the first or second end. This one goes for something completely different and yeah, it works. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a memorable ending and it was unexpected. I had not, I mean, when I saw Griff first, I wasn't like that. He's gonna close out the movie. I mean, I could kind of, you know, I see why they did it. I also think he was in the movie for the right amount of time. He was fun and quirky. I, I think it would have been too much if he had been in it for more, but I also didn't get tired of him or anything. I thought it was nice how they brought in some new gadgets, you know, the, the jetpacks, the motorcycles. Yes, I do like them, even if they... Like I said in the review, it doesn't make sense that they have them in that time period when they don't have them in the future, present kind of thing, but yeah. Now... I should maybe say, I already talked about how I don't like that this tries to say that, you know, oh, Kay knew Jay from when he was a child. I do like that the, you know... I, I do think that it works that that was kind of the event that made him more gruff and reserved. That, I think, works. Hmm. I also quite liked, you know, as an atheist, I thought I would maybe object to the whole ooh, miracle thing. I thought it worked. I, I liked how it was just this thing of, you know, ooh, a lot of thing ha things have to come together. and. It, you know, there's a lot of reason it could go wrong. It was just sort of a celebration of sometimes we are just extremely fortunate. Sometimes it could go horribly wrong, but it doesn't. And I have no problem with appreciating that. That is definitely true, you know. I, yeah, I don't know. I haven't really thought about if that's supposed to suggest a higher power or not. But, you know, at least... I don't know, at least it didn't preach, you know, it didn't say, you know, so because of this, you know, miraculous stuff. Yeah, now, I, I like that the pie worked, like Kay pointed out, you know, and it's true, you know, it, I believe Da Vinci himself had, like, a quote about, you know, if you turn away from your work for a little while and then, you know, go back to it, you will approach it with completely different, you know, eyes, and yeah, it's, it's absolutely true, you know, tried and true, Take a break, sometimes it'll, you know, completely help you in solving 
the problem. And yeah, you know, because if they hadn't gone to that place and had the pie, you know, Jay wouldn't have thought of the whole amazing and miraculous thing. And Griff actually did drop a huge hint, so they just needed to, you know, be reminded of the Mets. Or he needed to be reminded of the Mets, because he's the one who knows the future, so he knows how it, work, how it would work out. Now... I should maybe talk briefly about the whole time travel... Excuse me, the, the sort of time travel logic. Excuse me. We don't really find out how. Actually, I thought it was a little interesting how this movie barely spends any time focusing on this needs to be fixed, sort of, and this needs to be avoided for being a time travel movie. It was basically just, well, K has to survive and the Arknet has to be turned on. You know, that was pretty much the focus as far as the, the time travel stuff. There was none of, like, oh, we have to make sure that this, you know, we have to make sure that these two people don't meet or that they do meet kind of thing, you know, yeah. But yeah, we don't know how it worked out originally. We don't know how everything happened as it should without Jay there because some of the things, you know, it was Jay doing it, you know, he saved his life at the bowling alley and stuff like that. And yeah, in, in this one... But, but yeah, so... I do like that there isn't really any time travel stuff where, basically, this seems to, I don't remember the name of that school of thought of time travel, but this says that if you go back in time and change something, butterfly effect, that's what it's called, if you go back in time and change one thing, then, you know, Everything that happens after that point will have been changed by that one little thing you changed, and you can go back, you can, you know, do little surgical strikes. Stepping on butterflies. You know, and... Yeah. It, it kept to that. You know, there wasn't suddenly something where... You know, something always had to involve the time travel, which is a different school of time travel. You know, other movies messed that up. This one didn't. I appreciate that. Now, I did, I don't know, Jay uses time travel once, other than the main jump. I don't know, that kind of, I don't have a problem with him doing it that one time, I just wonder why he only did it that one time, but I don't know, I guess he didn't feel like any other time were, that it was necessary, maybe, or something, I don't know. But, but yeah, you know... I maybe did think that we didn't need to see all that stuff with the time travel again, but nah, I guess they did shorten it, you know. But yeah, it, it was a lot of fun to see the first time, you know, with how, you know, you, you just very quickly realize that, ah, he's like passing completely through time in a linear progression and everything. He's, you know, we have the paper blowing up and it's like, you know, Okay, now you're in this time period, you know, once, once he gets to modern times, you know, once he gets past the T-Rex trying to eat him and stuff like that. And I quite liked the, the tension of the scene where, you know, it's like, okay, don't lose this thing, and then, you know, he falls down, and it flies out of his hand, you know, because it's, it's a total drop, and it's, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of air pressure, so yeah, you know. And he gets it with his feet. Also great use of 3D. Yeah, that whole thing, and and I, I like the stoner character, I maybe didn't expect to, but, you know, stuff like, you know, okay, so you gotta make sure to disable the laser, uh, you know, when, when you get to the proper, you know, uh, height, D disable the laser, no, no, not now, no, I'm saying when I get to the proper height, yeah, sure. Do I disable the laser, laser or don't I? You know, that was a lot of fun. And, and I really liked, like, you know, when Jay walks in, you know, okay, hi, we've got sale on batteries, and, like, you know, very tired of doing the spiel. And then, gun to his head, he's like, D dude, we got other stuff, you know? <laughs> that was pretty good. That was, that was funny. That was, like, one of the few funny jokes before, uh, you know, the, the jump back in time.
I thought that the climax was a nice you know, set piece with the yeah with the with the launch and the the two Bobori, I guess, and yeah, you know, and I did like how you know yeah you know this time he kills him instead of just arresting him and you know you have the other one being like you know burned by the the rocket taking off you know stuff like that mm. hmm i suppose that more or less covers it I quite liked how, like, when we first meet Griff, you know, at first we have no idea who he is or, or how important he's going to be, and he's just, like, talking to Jay, and Jay's just trying to be friendly. He's like, you know, oh, okay, how, how are you feeling, man? And he's like, oh, blah, 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 you know, and talking about these different time periods, and Jay's like, okay? And, you know, I also did think that the okay joke was kind of funny, you know. Wait, you know, oh, well, O is a feminine and K is a male, so when I see a couple, I'm like, okay. It's, it's a little funny. And obviously the only reason that they named the woman O. Now, the... Let me think. I, I quite like that young K was a very different person, you know, and that he he felt like a real person. He didn't feel like just a younger version of Tommy Lee Jones' character, you know. You could believe that this person existed, you know, and that he grew into the Tommy Lee Jones character. Now... But, but yes, Griff in that first scene. I know, terribly unfocused. You should see me on a bad night. Griff in that first scene with him, you know, and, and he's, you know, and, and so the, then, you know, Kay comes out, and they're like, well, this is the important guy, and then he's like, oh, but this happens, and this, oh no, you know, I, I, I hope that he didn't actually, you know, get all greens on the way here, and it's like, you know, oh, that makes sense, you know, if he didn't hit traffic, I guess he would be there, so, you know, it's, it, it makes good sense, it's not like a, a weird kind of joke, it's just, it's it's a surprisingly normal kind of weird joke actually because it's still a weird joke. It's it's a guy talking about the possible future, and then it involves traffic, you know. But but yeah, you know he's like, which means we all die in like two seconds. Ooh, that was a close one. You know, it's just <laughs> brilliant and you know, focus on the door. And then he's like, oh no, wait, he's gonna come through that door in ten nine. No wait. It's this other time because you know this and that, and then suddenly he's you know behind them and saying, "You're just, brilliant, you know, this a lot of fun." And and I liked that he was a character, you know, when when they go there and he's like still looking at the Mets game, and you know they they briefly see what he sees, and he talks about you know. He talks about how it is to see the world like that, and uh, yeah, you know, that... I think if the scene hadn't been so good, we, the audience, would have been annoyed. We would have been like, well, t look, they're on an important mission. They don't have time for this crap. But instead, you're like, yeah, he's, you know, it's gotta really suck to live like that, to, to constantly be forced to see all these possible paths that the future can take, you know. But, but yeah, and, and I like that he was then there the, at the end of the film, you know, that he's still there in, in the present. I suppose that's more or less it. I'm probably completely wrong about this, but hadn't the whole Martin Luther... You know, the, the march and all that happened by the time this movie takes place. I did, do I have my years wrong? I just feel like that was late 60s or something. And Because the way that, the, you know, Jay is treated in the past and the... I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Anyway, yeah, that pretty well covers it.
please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.